John Muir Laws, and welcome to the Nature Journal Connection. I just witnessed an absolutely fascinating interaction between birds. I was sitting in my house and I heard <coughs> this incredible cacophony of crow noises outside my house. I walk out and I look way over the houses down the block and I can see these crows doing this above, above a tree. And so I thought there's something interesting going on here. Grabbed all my journaling gear, went around the corner or down the block. And as I do, um, up the street comes this swirl of birds. And in the middle of it, there's this little hawk flying like this. And the crows are just going nuts around it. Lands in a second tree. The crows are going, ah, 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 ah. they're circling around it. And there's just this, this incredible just surge of bird noise. And then the hawk, looking at all these, these, so hawk this big, right? Crows smaller, but but the the the, the crows are just they're they're actually getting pretty close to this 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 hawk. The the hawk is looking around. Then the hawk flies to another tree. The hawk finally gets to a tree where the crows are. They hang out in different trees, not in its same tree, and it kind of can sit underneath underneath some branches, so it has a little bit of roof. They can't be dive bombing at its little hawk head. And it sat there for a while. I was able to, to, to get out my sketchbook, made a little drawing of it. And then the hawk flies out, goes to yet another tree, but this time the whole flock of crows follows it. And again, they land in the tree right next to it. They just go crazy around the bird. And it sits there for a little while and finally flies off and to a place where I can't get to, followed by this big crowd of crows. So the crows, are in this mob around the hawk and it was really cool so every once in a while when you're going around you will see some interesting behavior you'll see nature doing something cool and when this happens you want to be ready for the event and the the strategy is very often you don't have your journal with you right at that moment but you want to remember the details of what happens so while it's going on as i'm following these birds around i start saying out loud the observations that I make. And it actually turns out that saying it out loud makes a really big difference for you being able to remember it later on to be able to get it into your journal. Let's take a look at a few strategies that comic book artists use on a regular basis to help them be able to tell their stories. Let's imagine that this is your nature journal. So you've opened it up. There's the center of it. So there's your book. You're looking at your book. Let's first just think about how we might lay out information in here, right? You're going to be making a set of panels, a set of frames in your journal that tell the story. And usually what we do is we think of them moving from the left to the right and from the top to the bottom. So the story would go one, two, three, and then you go drop down to the next row. You don't have to keep all these boxes the same size. So you can also have, you know, a long box. There's box number four, so your story continues there. You can have boxes that go all the way across the page. Right? So that would be five, six. And we're used to reading books this way, so when you organize your comic in the same way, that's a really easily understood strategy. Another thing that you can do is in a single panel in your comic book, you can make a little diagonal divider. These are kind of fun, dynamic. You can have part of the story happening here, right, of what's going on with the duck. And then uh, this, this happens, and then here's an event that's kind of closely related to that, right? This is duck number two, kind of, and it does this. So you can sometimes have one panel and it. You do a little split screen on it. That's a fun way to do things. You can also make a picture that goes a large frame, be you know even half or more of the page. So they don't have to all be little tiny frames. 
here are some other strategies that you can do with your, your, your journal frames. You don't have to have them separated like this. It's kind of cool to have that little diagonal divider, but here's, here's another similar strategy. All right, let's say this is frame number one. Another thing I could do is have that overlapping frame number two here. All right, and we're gonna read this one, then this one. And then of course on your page, you would go down. Here's page frame number three. Here is a round frame. That would be frame number four. So you'd be reading your story like that. In addition to the pictures that are in these, you also want to think of text. So you could have text written, so you could be writing your words into one of these. You could also, sometimes what people will do is they will have the words outside of the box out here. If things are making noises, this is a great way, you know, to, you can add in little voice boxes. So you can use all those cartooning elements to help move your story along and describe what's happening. Another thing that you can do on these pages, a very useful strategy, is to show movement. And I'll show you a few ways of doing this, and you can do whatever uh, makes the most sense to you. One way you can show movement is just from, you know, frame number one happens. We assume that frame number two is just going to be a little bit further along. But in a single frame, let's say I have an object here, and I want to show that it is moving. Here's a few ways of suggesting movement. One is, if it's, say, moving in this direction, I can put a series of little lines, kind of, see this is a curve? I'm just following that curve with some of these lines. And as I go further away from it, they're getting smaller. That makes it sort of feel like this is kind of, this is, this is closer. So it's something that is rolling in this direction or moving in this direction. Let's say it was bouncing. Another way you can show movement is with some action lines. So it can go boom, boom, All right? There is our little ball. And I can have my action lines on it. And often as you kind of go further away from it, that line can get, you know, here it's a double line here, we're going to single line here, we can kind of just dot it out. So that suggests that's older, this is more recent. You can combine these action lines with some of those little curves like we had right up here. Another way of showing movement is to draw sort of several um, several poses of the same thing. So let's say I've got an egret, and the egret is hanging out in a field, and the egret is hunting. And at the start, I see the egret is here. And then it spies something down below it, and it goes, oh, I want that, and it's going to zap at it. And so it tucks its head back. So it's going to take its neck, kind of lower it, and its neck gets a little bit more kinked. On the same little drawing here, I am going to draw number two. Sometimes where these kind of overlap, I will just sort of not have to draw this as, and then all of a sudden it goes zap and shoots its neck out and it's gonna grab this little fish that it sees out in front of it. So I can have several I can have several heads And so you can you can show that, but we want to show that first it did this, was looking around, then it tucks it back, and then it shoots out. So I could either, I could show this as one, and then two, 
and 3, so I could put numbers by them. But another thing I could do is um, I could just sort of draw an arrow that says we're going from this pose to this pose to this pose. So I can have arrows that will direct you first this, then this, then this. Another or interesting way of doing that might be just with movement arrows or movement lines saying that you know we're going to kind of we're going to kind of come down from this one to here and then we're going to shoot out that suggests that we were up here and then we tuck down here and then zoop right out to there so i can have i can show movement a lot of ways um, I really like doing these, you know, one animal with, with lots of heads. Um, that's a fun way to, to get that, that movement in. So you can do the same thing in your own journal. You can use the comic book style to document the behavior of animals that you see when you see an event happen in front of you. And so for this, it, it doesn't have to be a big dramatic show. You could be looking at, say, the behavior of a bee at a flower. If you make a series of panels, you can tell the story. So what you want to start looking around is thinking about, all right, animals have behaviors. Animals have behaviors and interactions. The next time I see an animal behavior, first it does this, then this, then this, then this happened, there's a story there. When you see an interaction, between two animals, there's a story there, and you want to tell the story with words, pictures, and numbers in your journal. And that's your project for this week, is you're going to look for the story and then transcribe that into your own journal. I hope you have a lot of fun with this project. I really like creating my own little graphic novels of my nature adventures. Until next time, this is your Nature Journal Connection. Thanks for joining us, and I'll see you in the woods. Doo -doo -doo.